The God who created time also created all the knowledge of time as well. God not only knows all the details of everything in history past, he also knows all the infinite possibilities of what might have been in ages past. In 1 Samuel 23, verses 1 through 12, David is at the city of Keilah, and Saul hears about it. And Saul's army starts coming toward Keilah to kill David, destroy the city, kill David. And so David asked the priest to inquire the Lord for him. If Saul's armies come to Keilah, will Saul come to Keilah to fight against us? And the Lord revealed, yes, he will come. If I stay here, will the people of Keilah deliver me up to him? Yes, if you stay there, they will deliver you up. David wisely took a cue from that. He said, okay, guys, mount up, we're leaving. They got out of Keilah because God revealed what would have happened if he had stayed. You remember when Jesus said that the cities of Tyre and Sidon would have remained to this day. They would have repented in sackcloth and ashes had they seen the things that Capernaum and Bethsaida had seen. And he says to the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, they would have believed they would have been spared had they seen the things that Christ had done in Capernaum. He knows all the alternate possibilities, all the what-ifs, all the might-have-beens. He knows everything that would have happened in the course of your life if you had gone to that different school, if you had married that other person, if you had taken that different job, all the ways your life might have gone. He knows all of them. He knows everything present. 2 Chronicles 16.9 says, The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Psalm, 49, uh, Psalm 94 verse 9 says, He that planted the ear, shall he not hear? He that formed the eye, shall he not see? Psalm 33, 13-15, The Lord looketh from heaven. He beholdeth all the sons of men. From the place of his habitation, he looketh upon all the inhabitants of the earth. He considereth all their works. And he knows everything that ever will happen. Isaiah 46, 9 and 10, I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done. In Isaiah 41, 22 and 23, God challenges the false God saying, let them show the former things what they be or declare us things for to come. Show the things that are to come after that we may know that ye are God's because his ability to predict future offense, uh, events is an ultimate proof of his deity. Our God is a God of prophecy. And in Mark 8:31, Jesus showed his understanding of future events. He began to tell his disciples how they were going up to Jerusalem. He was going to be betrayed to the chief priests. They were going to uh, beat him, and they were going to convict him, and they were going to kill him. But the third day he would rise again. Prophetic events in the Bible are one of the most powerful proofs that it is God's revelation. Other holy books tend to avoid making predictions. And when they try to foretell the future, it generally backfires on them. But God not only possesses all the knowledge in the universe and all the knowledge of time, but he also possesses all the supernatural wisdom of mysteries in eternity that no man could ever discover without God revealing them to them.